Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This is going to be part three of Serpents in the Bible. We're going to read from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. Well, I tell you what, these are some interesting things. Verse 1, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. You ever hear people tell you, a uh, preacher say, Well, all you got to do is believe in Jesus. Doctrine's not important. What? What do you mean it's not important? Of course doctrine's important. Uh, Mormons say in their book of Doctrines and Covenants that uh, Jesus is the brother of Satan. Do you realize what they're telling you is that their Savior is Satan's brother? Uh, is doctrine important? Is Jesus born of the virgin birth, or is he the son of a whore, a prostitute, as the uh, Noahides teach, the Kabbalah, Kabbalists, the Talmudists? Doctrine is very important. I mean, if Jesus wasn't born of a virgin, then he's afflicted with the same sin nature that we all are. I mean, that was the reason, the whole reason for the virgin birth so that he wasn't tainted with the sin that passed upon all of mankind. Doctrine is very important. My doctrine shall drop as the dew, my speech shall distill as the dew. I'm sorry, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. Hmm. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. Now the Vatican will tell you Peter's the rock, but Deuteronomy says God. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They, speaking of Israel, they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked, crooked generation. Hmm, what's a crooked generation? You ever heard of, uh, gee, that car salesman and that uh, politician, they're crooked. You get the idea. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he the Father that hath brought, bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Who divided the nations? The Lord did, the Most High. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Who divided the nations? Who separated the people? The Lord did. Who wants to put everybody and mix them all up together? Uh, the devil, the New World Order, the United Nations. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated, separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now, Jacob's name was changed by the Lord to Israel. Jacob is Israel. Jacob was his birth name. 
the Lord changed Jacob's name to Israel. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste howling wilderness, he led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth, beareth them on her wings. So, listen to this. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Who's he? Who's him? The Lord. As an eagle, the Lord, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, and beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with them. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead here real quick, because we just read where the Lord was like an eagle that, you know, fluttered the wings and, you know, l let's face it, a parent eagle is going to protect its chick or chicks, right? Uh, let's go to the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Now, I do a commentary on this. In my, it's in a playlist somewhere. You'll, you know, there's a search bar on my channel, and if you look up uh, something, uh, if a topic interests you, you could just, you know, look it up. Oh, for those of you that don't know it, I am on BitChute. B I T C H. Yeah, somebody pointed out it says bitch, bitch U T E BitChute. Uh, they're changing the name to Speak Out. S P K O U T. I don't know when they're going to do it, but they're going to do it. Yeah, thanks uh, to my listener for pointing out that that was uh, uh, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. Uh, just type in Chaplain Bob Walker and you'll you'll find me. You know, type in Bob Walker, you'll find me. I'm on uh, BitChute so that if, if or when uh, the tube boots me off, you know where to find me. And if you wanted to Detailed commentary on Revelation chapter 12. Just go to my ser the search bar on my channel and type in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and under her head a crown of 12 stars. The 12 stars were the uh, 12 sons of Is uh, Israel, Jacob Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained, to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And I believe in uh, this is pointing out to Herod when he tried to kill all the children in Bethlehem. Verse 5, And she brought forth a, a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, that's Christ, and her ch child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's three and a half years, and I think this is going to be the tribulation period. Who's the woman? Everyone, I'll tell you. Well, the woman is Christ's uh, bride, the, the church, or they'll tell you the woman is Israel. And I say, yep, the woman is Israel, the bride of Christ. And then they'll try to tell you, oh no, the bride of Christ and the church and Israel, they're all, those are different. No, they're not. The bride of Christ is Israel, which is the church. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. And I don't think this is future. I think this is talking about the past. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there 
place found anymore in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's you and me, people. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. But uh, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the pre-trib rapture. No. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Do you have faith enough that if somebody stuck a gun to your head and said, deny Jesus and I'll let you walk out of here alive, but if you say, I love Jesus, I'm going to pull the trigger and blow your brains out. Do you have that kind of faith? Do you love your life? Do you love not your life unto death? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. They used to feed Christians to the lions. And the preachers today teach the pre-trib rapture. Oh, God would never do that to us. We're the bride of Christ. Why, God's not a wife beater. No, he's not. But Satan is. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. What is wrath? Anger. Having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman was given two wings of a great, what? Eagle. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, a year, and times, two years, and half a time, six months, from the face of the serpent. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. I think this is the tribulation period, people. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth. The dragon was angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, her children. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Huh. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, but you don't pay any attention to God's commandments and you, you commit adultery, you commit murder, you fornication, uh, you steal... What kind of testimony is that? You know, it sounds like this is teaching lordship salvation, they'll tell you, doesn't it? Yeah. You see, God said he would write the law on our inward parts, so. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, bearing, beareth them on her wings." 
So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine, kine's just an old English word, it means cattle, you know. Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Hmm. The blood of the grape. Didn't Jesus uh, at the Last Supper give them bread and wine and say, take, drink, this is the blood of the covenant? Oh, yeah, he sure did. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, Matthew 26, 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I'm awaiting that day. All right. Back to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 14. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape, but Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked, thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of that rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. What does abhorred mean? It means hated. He abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. That's a bad thing to be in, people. I will hide my face from them. In other words, I'm going to hide from them. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation. That means evil, pretty much. Children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Do you know what vanity is? Uh, to be vain, vain, vain means worthless. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. That's, you know what vanity is? A bunch of guys sitting around drinking, watching the Super Bowl, screaming and yelling because their favorite team is winning or losing or whatever. That's vanity, people. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her incense and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Ooh, where have we read this before? Well, let's take a look at 2 Peter chapter 3. And there's a lot of people who tell you, oh, 2 Peter is not really, shouldn't be in the Bible. It's not really Peter, and it, it's fake. 
Yeah. And the reason they tell you that is because 2 Peter chapter 3 vindicates Paul as an apostle when they hate Paul. But they really hate Jesus. Verse 1. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. So if there's holy prophets, there's going to be unholy prophets. If you want to see unholy prophets, turn on TBN. And of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Yeah, we've been hearing this Jesus is coming back stuff for almost 2,000 years. You know, it's, it's getting old. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willing for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. You ever heard people say, oh, he's a slacker. That means they're lazy you know, or doesn't do what he's supposed to do. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Wow. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, or wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Back to Deuteronomy 32. 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with their incense, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, 
and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents, with the poison of serpents of the dust. Ooh. The sword without and terror within. This is a, I did this verse um, on Ishmael and the Arabs in Bible prophecy right after 9-11. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. That's me. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. And that's, that's, that's us people. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps, A-S-P-S. -S. That's a very venomous, dangerous type of snake, a serpent. Verse 34, is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted, which did eat up the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Oh, yeah? So you want to you wanna sacrifice to Satan? Well, when all the bad things happen to you, like in the tribulation period, when the when the the grass all burns up, the sea turns to blood, and all the fish die, and the ships are destroyed. Go pray to Satan. See what happens. See if Satan will deliver you. You know, I've had atheists so-called tell me, oh, look at the starving people in Africa and India. If, if God was real, why doesn't he feed them? Simple. They don't pray to God. They don't pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Bible. They pray to devils. They pray to Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma, Hare Krishna. They pray to the God of the voodoo. They pray to Satan and his devils. Let them feed them. See? And he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Oh yeah, you want to sacrifice to devils? Let them be your protection. Verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them 
that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hoshea, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abiram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. You know what's Israel? Uh, interesting. The satanic Canaanites, which I believe are the children of the devils, went into the land of Canaan. That's why they were called Canaan, because Canaan was their father. They were called the Canaanites. And they went into the land, prob probably knowing full well that that was Israel's inheritance, and they tried to thwart Israel. Well, then God got angry. He had the Assyrians grab northern Israel, kick them out of the land, and then later had Babylonians come under King Nebuchadnezzar and kick Jerusalem and the rest of Ju uh, Judah out of the land. And then a portion of Judah returned after, uh, in the days of Daniel, and under Ezra and Nehemiah, they rebuilt the temple. And uh, in 70 AD, uh, Rome absolutely destroyed the temple for the last time, uh, for the last, whatever, almost, you know, 1900 years or so. But if you ask me, the Canaanites are back in the land and they call themselves Israelis and they're going to try to thwart the return of the Lord and fight against him when he returns. But it's not going to help. So, all right. So, and the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day saying, get thee up into this mountain, Abiram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession, and die in the mount whither thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Mirabah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, I... I wilderness of sin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. See, uh, God told Moses to strike the rock and he hit it twice. So, God promised Moses he would see the promised land, but God's going to let him die on the other side of the river. He's gonna, he sees it from the mountain, but he's not going to be allowed to go in. You know, and, and believe me, God loved Moses. Moses was a meek man. I mean, but when you dishonor the Lord in any way, shape, or form, there's consequences. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give to the children of Israel. All right, I think I'm going to close out this part three of Serpents in the Bible, and uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32.
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, the rock of our salvation. In his precious name, amen.